going on everyone? Brian Matias here. So in this video, I wanna show you how you can add that ethereal, dreamy kind of magic look to your photos using Adobe Photoshop CC. Now here's the thing. If a photographer, if you see a video that says how to add dreamy look to your photo, odds are they're talking about adding the Orton effect. And the Orton effect was named after photographer Michael Orton years ago when he was using slide films to kind of layer two copies of a photo together uh, to create a certain look. Uh, now that we use kind of digital editing with our photography, you can take the same layer, you can duplicate it in Photoshop and using a variety of filters and tools, you can add this really, really cool look. Now, the thing about Orton uh, and this kind of dreamy processing is that there are a thousand ways to do it. If you just do a search on YouTube for Orton, you'll see a bunch of different videos. And actually, I highly recommend checking them out. Uh, when I first was learning to understand how to do this kind of process years ago, I went to YouTube and I looked to see what photographers were doing because it varies. You know, there are so many different ways to do this. And in this situation, there really are like a thousand ways to skin a cat. So. With that, one of the things that I want to bring up as well is that just because I do it this way doesn't necessarily mean that it's the way that you should do it. It's just that for me, I've done this so many times that I've kind of developed a certain aesthetic for this particular look, this Orton look, uh, that works for me. So my recommendation is to try it out, see how it interacts with your photos and move from there. Another thing is that I've tried this on a bunch of different types of photos. And for me, the one that I found that it works most consistently and also provides the most pleasing results is the kind of like forested scene, like, you know, my landscape stuff, especially uh, in the gorge or around the Pacific Northwest where it's very green and there's a lot of trees and shrubbery and bushes uh, and water. Uh, that's where that effect, I think, really brings out a nice quality. And like with a bunch of other photo editing techniques, you want to keep moderation in mind. You don't necessarily have to crank that opacity slider to 100 for Orton, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. Uh, you know, make sure that you kind of, just a little bit of salt really does a lot to flavor a dish. So, and you can always add more, but you can't take it out. The other thing is, don't necessarily fall onto this as a crutch, meaning don't use this Orton effect on every single photo. Uh, you'll find yourself kind of, falling into this rhythm and that rhythm will turn into a rut. And then all of a sudden, every photo that you share is gonna look the same. So just kind of, you know, be selective, uh, pay attention to the photo that you're working on, you know, really ask yourself whether something like this Orton effect will uh, benefit it and then move from there. Now, before we jump over to the computer, I have one quick reminder. If you like this video, just hit that thumbs up button and I would love it if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get notified of all of my videos, which I'm releasing weekly. And if you've got any questions, hit them in the comments below. All right. Now let's have some fun. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. Before we do anything in Photoshop, I want to just fix a few things about the photo. This is straight out of camera. You can see uh, I took this with a Sony a7R Mark III and the Sony 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8. And, uh, you know, kind of a modest 1.3 seconds at f11 to give me that really nice long exposure. And that's something that's important. Remember, I talked about subject matter is really important. Uh, for me, I find these forested scenes with moving water, for example, or the sun, you know, especially if it's uh, on the horizon near an edge, I find that this processing technique works really well. So, you know, here again, we've got all of the bushes uh, and the ferns and this beautiful waterfall, as well as this really nice kind of moss covered fallen tree. And just overall, yeah, this I can see I've used this processing technique enough the Orton technique enough where I can tell in advance right away, yeah, this is going to be uh, an ideal photo for the processing. And just as important, I know when to say, you know what, probably don't need it. So here we go. Let's start editing the photo. First things first, I'm going to click auto uh, and you can see just what a really nice job it did. Just kind of going before and after just recovers. Look at all the highlights over here that it recovers. It brings out some of that shadow detail. I've talked about the auto setting in Lightroom many times. It is a really wonderful tool. Uh, I talked about it on my podcast, The No Name Photo Show, which I would love if you subscribed. Uh, check out episode 45 with Adobe Lightroom product manager, Josh Haftel, because we talk about the auto setting. The reason why I love it is because it fixes so much for me. This is stuff I would be doing anyway. So with one button, I get it there, but that's neither here nor there. The next thing I'm gonna do is take my white balance dropper and I'm gonna sample something right there. You can see that it kind of warms up the photo. 
I was shooting with a filter, so it just removed a tiny bit of the color cast, so that's looking good there. Next thing I'm gonna do is open up the exposure just a tiny bit, somewhere around there, uh, just to, to kind of make it a little bit brighter. And for the most part, we're good. What I might do actually is if I press and hold on the option or alt key while dragging on the white slider, I'm just gonna bring my white point out and open up the black point just a bit. Now by pressing and holding the option or alt key while dragging on those two sliders, I can actually see the areas in the photo where either the, the blacks are being clipped or the highlights are being blown out. So I'm just gonna bring it right there. So if anything, you can see just toggling before and after. It's uh, just, all we did was fix tonality. Uh, we really didn't do much with color. Uh, we added a little bit, the auto added a little bit of vibrance and a tiny uh, bit of saturation was taken away. But overall, I think you would agree that this is just a, a toned image uh, and it is, if anything, just slightly flat. So now that we have kind of this flat looking image, we can send it to Photoshop and I'm not gonna do it the normal way. So normally I'll go to photo, edit in, and then select edit in Photoshop. Here, I actually wanna edit it as a smart object. So I'm gonna select that to bring it into Photoshop. And so here we are in Photoshop. First thing I wanna do is just kind of maintain my layer hygiene. So I'm gonna rename this and I'll call this original from Lightroom. And in the intro, I mentioned how with the Orin technique, what you're essentially doing is you're taking a duplicate of your photo and you're blending it one way or the other. Back in the day, he did that with his slide film. Now we do them with layers uh, in Photoshop and in most any other editing application, they'll have some form of Orton. Some will actually uh, call it Orton. Some of it will call it, I don't know, some, some name, uh, but it is essentially this Orton technique. So normally what I would do is I would just right click and duplicate the layer just by going here. But what I want to do is something different. Now I'll show you what I mean. So if I duplicated the layer, if I just take this layer and I drag it over here, I now have my copy. And you remember we brought this photo from Lightroom as a smart object. You'll know that it is a smart object because it has this little icon over here. And what a smart object allows you to do is if you double click on the thumbnail, in this case, the smart object will open up into camera raw and you'll see all of the edits that we made in Lightroom are over here. Now, Remember what I did was I just duplicated the layer just flatly. All I did was I dragged the layer to the new layer icon. So let's say here, I go ahead and I open up the exposure and I click okay. Notice how both layers here have updated the exposure values, which is not what I want. So I'll just go over here to history and we'll just kind of go to our name change there. So we have our layer. Rather than duplicating this layer, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to new smart object via copy. Now, let's just say I go here and I update that exposure and I click OK. Aha, now we have two different photos. And the reason why I want to work with smart objects is because with smart objects, it's a truly non-destructive workflow. If I want to come back in the future, as long as I have the PSD file, I can go and readjust something. I can go into camera raw, for example, and dial something back or dial something up. It just gives you a lot more flexibility than working with flat layers. So again, what we did was we right clicked and we went to new smart object via copy. That gives us this layer right here. Now let's go to history. I don't actually want to make that exposure value change. I just want to keep it as is. And I'll go ahead now and rename this. So I'll call this uh, Orton layer. Now it's time to make the Orton layer come to life. To do that, with this layer selected, I'm gonna to go to Filter, Blur, and then select Gaussian Blur. First thing you wanna make sure of is that you have this preview checkbox turned on. If it's off, you won't see the effect as you start increasing the radius slider. So we'll turn that on. And here's the thing about this radius slider. Remember in the intro, I mentioned how I watched a bunch of these videos? Well. In almost every other video, there's a different rationale for how to set that radius slider. And in my experimentation, the one that I found to be the most accurate is to move that slider to the value of however many megapixels the camera sensor has uh, that took the photo. So in this case, I took the photo with a Sony a7R Mark III, which is a 42.1 megapixel sensor. So I'm just going to type in 
42. And that has to do with making sure that the, uh, the Gaussian blur effect is strong enough to cover the resolution of the photo. And that's, again, through just watching a bunch of videos. That's kind of what I've come up with, and I found this to be uh, most accurate. So with that, let's click OK. We'll apply that blur. And again, because we're working with a smart object, the filter, which normally would just be applied directly to the layer, has been applied to uh, this as a smart filter. So if I go here and I double click it, I have access to uh, the Gaussian blur, and I can change it as I see fit going down the line. Also, a nice thing about working with smart objects and smart filters is that when we apply the smart filter, this layer mask was created, which we'll be using in a little bit. So you can see here, that's Orton, right? It looks great. This Doesn't this look so dreamy? No, it doesn't. It looks like you've just completely put Vaseline all over your photo. What you want to do first, or what I do typically, is I choose between one of three different blending modes. Remember, it's not just taking a copy of your layer and adding a blur. That's not all you do. You actually have to control how those two layers blend between each other. So there are three very common uh, blending modes that I've seen people work with and that I've worked with myself. Uh, and we'll just look at them really qu quickly. The first is multiply. And you can see that multiply, you know, it really darkens the shadows. You really do get that kind of uh, dreamy look, but it can be a bit too strong. The next one is overlay. So overlay brings a lot more of the highlights through. It's a little bit brighter, um, but it still has a lot of punch as far as contrast goes. And the third one, and the one that I like the most, is soft light. So just to show between overlay and soft light. Soft light is what I find to, to be one of the most pleasing when used in conjunction with the Orton effect. Now, if we even just toggle the before and the after, you can see we have a, a really nice effect. But I mentioned this before, it's all about moderation, right? You don't necessarily want to drag that slider to 100 uh, all the time. So let's take this slider, the opacity slider of that layer. Let's bring it to zero and we'll dial it up slowly and see what that effect looks like as we build it in. So somewhere right around there. Now you might be thinking, well, that doesn't really look, you know, very strong as, you know, not at least as it does here. And that's because we're using in this situation at 100%, we're using that Gaussian blur with the soft light blending mode to create that contrast. But the problem is that we're really losing a lot of detail. Let's uh, kind of zoom in really quickly and just kind of look over here. We're losing a lot of detail in things like uh, this tree and the rock at the bottom, which normally has a lot of detail. If we turn it off, there's a lot of detail there. So you don't necessarily want to use this particular layer specifically as the stylization for contrast and tone. So watch what we'll do. We're going to bring this back down to about 30%, 32%, and then we're going to go to our adjustments panel. If you don't have the adjustments panel visible, just go to window and then select adjustments and it'll pop up. And we're going to use a levels adjustment. In my case here, the properties for the levels are right here on the bottom. I'm going to take the white point and I'm going to move it to the left here to make it a bit brighter. So somewhere right around here looks good. Then let's take the midpoint. I'm going to darken the midpoint by bringing it to the right. And let's also deepen the shadows just a bit by moving the black point. So somewhere right around there. Now you can see we added a nice bit of contrast, but we have this uh, blown out area, especially right here. The highlights are totally blown out and uh, it just doesn't look very good. It's very distracting. So again, working with adjustment layers, sort of like the smart filters, when you add one, there is a layer mask that's automatically bound to that adjustment layer and we can use it. So we'll select our brush right here from the tool well, or you can press B, make sure that black is the foreground color, and then we can adjust the brush opacity. So somewhere around maybe 25 to 30%, just so that we don't get too strong of a mask. And with a big soft brush, I'm just gonna paint back some of those highlights. And I'm just going to the brightest parts and you can see how it's blending in really nicely. So just right there. And we're looking good. Now it looks a lot more even. You can see, let's toggle. And if I'm looking at the brightest parts of the photo, I can see if I'm missing areas that I 
kind of want to mask back in. Now there's like one more step and it's a critical one. And I don't know how many people necessarily do this. And I've watched a lot of these kind of similar videos. The problem is that what we're doing so far, aside from that adjustment layer has been global, meaning it's applied that Orton everywhere. And there are some parts, like I mentioned, that have a lot of detail. And I don't want to lose that detail for the sake of getting that kind of dreamy look. So I mentioned earlier, one of the nice kind of convenient things about working with smart filters is that there is a mask there. And so what I'm going to do is select that mask uh, for the Orton layer. And just like we did with the layer mask here for the levels adjustment layer, I'm going to start removing gradually that uh, Orton effect from this image, specifically areas that are supposed to have detail. So same thing as before, you can use the brush here uh, and make sure you have black as your foreground. As far as opacity goes, that's up to you as in terms of how aggressive you want to be with restoring some of that detail, because what we're doing is we're going to be restoring uh, the sharpness here uh, from the original layer. Another way that I've seen people do it is they've added an unsharp filter, which totally works fine for me, for my purposes. This is totally fine. I've never seen any issues with it. So what I'm going to do is just start kind of drawing right here. You can see that the mask starts building in the mask thumbnail. And if I zoom in a bit, so what I'm doing is I'm focusing on these areas that should have um, detail and I'm making several strokes just kind of through this tree, like on this rock here. I want to make sure that has detail. If we zoom in even more. Yep. You see how the rock starts, you kind of start to see that detail. You don't have to do it on every single rock or, you know, anything that's supposed to have detail, but I find that by doing that, uh, it, it really adds a, a, a kind of a depth to it because if everything is soft, if every edge is soft, then it also kind of looks a little bit flat, but by adding uh, or restoring rather some of that detail, some of that sharpness, uh, I think it adds a, a really nice quality to the photo. So uh, all I'm doing here is just kind of bringing that back in areas that should be sharp to begin with. So there. That's looking good. And again, I can spend a lot more time just kind of actually, yeah, no, I want to do this. I forgot about this guy right here, this middle part. So let's go here, bring that detail back. I'm looking good. We're still getting the benefit of Orton throughout the photo. You know, all of that uh, kind of glowy ethereal look is still in the, uh, the ferns and the bushes over here throughout the photo. So we're still getting that. Uh, and just to show you, let me show you this. I'll just really quickly take these layers here and I am going to group them by selecting this folder and it'll just make it easier to show you the original. So that was kind of straight up from Lightroom. And this was what we were able to do with the Orton filter. Again, you'll see a thousand different ways to do it. You'll also see a thousand different results, especially if you are kind of pushing the Orton effect to the max, you know, turning that dial to 11 which I don't think you want to do all the time. Uh, the thing with these kinds of photos is you don't necessarily want to be able to tell that an Orton look was applied. Rather, the, the Orton look should just kind of be a little supplement to the photo to enhance it. In this case here, what I did, if we again look at the original, remember the original was flat, not much contrast, not much of anything in terms of style. With the Orton look and also with that levels adjustment layer, um, I fixed and added some contrast and I added with that Gaussian blur and the soft light blending mode that added a really nice warmth and a color boost to the photo that, that just kind of gives it that fantasy look. And again, with the water, because the subject here, the subject and uh, really works well with Orton and Orton lends itself to this. I think it looks really good. And so that's how I apply Orton to my photos. This is pretty much the way I go. I might make a little tweak here and there, but for the most part, this is my Orton process. I hope you found it helpful. By all means, let me know what you think of it and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up if you liked it. And I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel to see all of my new videos and bonus points for hitting the bell icon to get notified whenever a new one goes live. Now I'm all about helping you guys out. So don't be a stranger. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think and if there are any topics you'd like to see me cover. Thanks again, everyone. I'll see you on the next one.